boiled potatoes, crushed to perfection, topped with green peas, along with the dampening of cumin, mixed with hand-picked Indian spices, covered in a wheat sheet, which is then given a shape of fortune cookie, which is then deep fried until it turns golden brown. It is then cooled for about two to three minutes and then served with a green sauce made of fresh cilantro, green chili and salt, which is accompanied by a red sauce made of tamarind and jaggery, or you could just call it samosa with green chutney and red chutney. Some ask me, why do I talk about food so much? My usual answer is, it's my passion. But let me reveal the truth. Most people eat to live, but I live to eat. In fact, in fact, food is one of the most important F word in my life. You could blame it on my parents. Way back in my 90s, uh, when I was in my school, my father always used to treat me with a uh, masal dosa in Vidyarthi Bhavan if I scored well. Or he would get me jalebis from uh, Bhagat Rams if, uh, if he's in a good mood. My entire childhood revolved around food. In fact, my bedtime stories was about food. I will, I will tell you one of my favorite one. Do you know that Bengaluru actually got its name from the word Bendakaluru? Back in 1120 AD, Hoysala King Veera Balala was lost in woods and an old lady offered him boiled beans for food. And he was so happy, he wanted to honor her and gave that piece of land in that particular name, Bendakaluru, which means big, a city of boiled beans, which later went on to become a developed town, Bangalore, and now Bengaluru. Bangalore, in fact, has been associated with food since back then. We have it in our DNA. In short, I was always surrounded by food, and unknowingly, I ended up being a foodie. Going to any place in Bangalore itself is a task. Traveling for meetings or gathering, I would already start planning where I want to eat. That's how much I love food. Thanks to the cosmopolitan city we are in, we are pampered with choices. And as and when we grow old, our choice of food and interests also change. Let's rewind back a few years. If you as a family wanted to go and eat out here in Bangalore, here's how would you probably break it down. If you are a veg family, you would go into one of the Sagar restaurants and order North Indian. If you are a non veg family, you would land in Nagarjuna or Nandana and then order your favorite biryani with some starters. If you are with friends, you would go to Brigade Road or MG Road and enter into one of those pubs. But today, if anybody wants to go out, this is probably how it goes. You would open up Google and look for restaurants near me, then go to Zomato to check for its rating, then go to Instagram to check for the food pictures, then you check with your friends, and then you open Google Maps to figure out how far is this place and how long does it take. By then, you would have already figured out that you can swiggy it because they're running out of discount. <laughs> now, if you pause here for a minute, the probable questions that's lingering in your head is, when did all this happen? Was this a sudden transition? Food is something that constantly evolves. Take an example from your own kitchen. Our moms have always tried and improvised our food which comes onto our plate so that we can finish it. How many of you are, uh, how many of you have actually ended up trying Maggi with Tadka? That's innovation which started from your childhood. So, the, have you heard about this? statement from pretty much your loved ones. The problem with this generation is you can't stand routine. You can't stand consistency. You guys get bored of everything. There is absolutely no discipline. Well, it's true. That's exactly what happened with food as well. We got bored of the same food over and over again. 
and hence the restaurants had to evolve and start bringing in new stuff from the men on their menu. Driven back in 70s and 80s, every single restaurant had similar items on their menu. If I had to go to a breakfast place, the usual breakfast would be idli, vada, dosa, puri, chachabat, etc. If I was a waiter in a restaurant and if I had to switch jobs, all I had to do is change my uniform and repeat the same menu. The same thing applied to lunch and dinner. In fact, the only thing that differed was taste and ambience. A few years later, us, the millennials, happened. And as usual, we don't like to stick to routine. And we wanted different. We wanted different things, we wanted more, and we wanted new stuff on our plate. Now the restaurant started bringing in dishes from across the country. We started seeing menu, including our neighboring cities, states, and eventually it went beyond borders. And suddenly we started exploring food from our luxury of local without even having to travel there from different countries. It's not that this did not exist back earlier. Back then, it was a luxury, but today, it's pretty much a basic necessity. I'll give you an example. Take an example for, uh, take an example, pizza. Pizza used to be a dish that I would order for celebration or for an experience. But today, we order pizza because we are too bored to run through the menu. We would just say, get a pizza. Bangalore back in 50s had a handful of restaurants like your MTR, CTR, Vidyarthi Bhavan and so on. In 80s we started seeing a few restaurants that came in from north, from different states and so on. But in 90s we got this new set of people called Sagars. They bought in so many fast food in our city that we ended up being the city of fast food joints. Now we have so many restaurants in Bangalore that we could actually narrow our choices from which country or which state cuisine we want and we will still not run out of uh, numbers. Today, we see a lot of experimental dishes in the restaurant. They change the menu every season. They have a winter menu, they have a summer menu and so on. In fact, they do food festival to lure customers. If you Noticed Mango Food Festival is right now on. Some restaurants adopt to this different style of cooking as well, from authentic cooking, influenced cooking, to fusion, to gastronomy, and so on. My favorite is, in fact, gastronomy. In the name of gastronomy, staple food items are having a fancy makeover. This is probably what keeps this generation happy and content. Since it's back to staple food, our old generations are also okay to try this because it's still the same staple food coming in a new shape. Just to give you an example, in fact, one of the top breweries of this city actually serves Raki Mudde with Nati Koli Gravy and Donne Biryani. In fact, these are one of the top selling items on the menu. This change did not limit for food itself. Bangalore, along with the rest of the country, witnessed this a couple of years back. During my father's younger days, they used to go out in the evening to catch up over a cup of coffee. But the place was pretty much these iconic places like MTR, Vidyarthi Bhavan, and so on, where they could meet up with their friends and have a coffee. A lot of people do it even today. A coffee followed in MTR followed by a walk in Lal Bagh before they head home. But in early 2000, we saw this unique phenomenon which was introduced to us by the West, Coffee Day. And then the country lost, lost its cool. They all ended up being so excited that going to Coffee Day was the ultimate level of being cool. In fact, suddenly everybody started ready, were ready to pay hundreds of rupees to just get a coffee. Why? Because the USP was you could get a coffee and sit there for two hours and the waiter would never disturb you. It was the perfect place for the youngsters to hang out. And then, suddenly, because it was so good, the country started seeing coffee day in every single neighborhood. 
because this is India, we just don't settle for one. This actually, this revolution actually brought in a brand new segment into the city, which is called cafes. Cafes initially started to sell coffees, just like other brands, but then started to sell quick meal, quick bites. Eventually, they ended up selling an entire menu. Today, the cafes range from healthy cafe, organic cafe, fitness cafe, and the list really goes on. In fact, the latest trend in this cafe, if you have observed, is serving authentic filter coffee. And how do they do that? They add a South Indian name next to it. And then they would say, they would give the same coffee, but still charge you 150 bucks for the same. And if you notice, the staple coffee is actually back in a new avatar. Similar to this trend, Bangalore is also known for one more very important culture. They call it the pop culture. Now, post 80s, when Bangalore actually saw its very first pub called Ramada, people were pretty excited. Soon enough, there was another pub called Black Cadillac on Residency Road. These two places were so good that people actually traveled from different cities to just see and witness this place. In a blink of an eye, we were a city of 3,000 plus pubs in Bangalore. But the influence actually came from some of these watering holes like Windsor Pub, Koshi's, Purple Haze, and Pub World. This is where people actually went to have a good time with their friends. Youngsters went to places which pretty much served beer pictures and played loud music, while adults went to places where they served alcohol with comfortable seating. This too had to change when in 2010, Bangalore actually witnessed its first ever microbrewery, the Beer Club, which was immediately followed by Toit. In fact, now the city has 70 plus breweries if you look at this entire thing, which means every brewery has about six beers, six freshly brewed beers. If you sum it up, we have a staggering 420 plus freshly brewed beers as an individual that I can choose from. Now, this is apart from your domestic and imported bottles as well. In fact, we love this experience so much that we ended up building the Asia's largest brewery in the city. This is where I tell the world really wants us to have a good time. This not only changed how people actually consumed alcohol, but what they did or the experience. People today don't drink to get tipsy or to get wasted. They do so to have a good time and great experience. Today's generation knows what they're drinking. Start from an IPA, Hefe, Stout. They know everything that they want to drink. If you observe, this is a ridiculously sharp contrast from those days in the past, where as a person, I had only two choices to choose from, premium or strong. <laughs> Finally, Finally, even our desserts have taken this route. The only ice creams we were known was the scoop on the cone. Joy ice creams were actually someone who bought joy in our lives. Today, it's evolved so much that, in, that it's actually prepared in front of you. They beat it, smash it, roll it, and then scoop it into a cup and give it to you. In fact, when you, back in those days, if you walked to a restaurant and looked at desserts, the only options you had were Indian desserts, or Indian sweets, so you call. Eventually, even that started changing, and we started seeing desserts, which was inspired from different countries. For example, cheesecake from the States, or baklava from Middle East. Our beloved gulab jamun was one of the celebrated dishes, or celebrated sweets, which is now making a comeback. But today, the gulab jamun comes back onto your table with a fire, and they call it flamed gulab jamun. <laughs> In fact, dessert is as important as main course today. 
food as a culture has taken a full circle and is evolving for the better. People are more educated about what they consume and how much. There is so much to explore, but so little time. So today, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm going to ask you a question, what's on your plate? I'm sure it's pretty complicated. Thank you.